and it's a joy for uh, me to be here offering uh, this course on the hip joints for you. And uh, my name is T.S. Little. If I haven't met you before, my home base is in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So um, the course, uh, the class today, will look at opening the hips, stabilizing the sacrum, and also the lower back. Sound good? Okay, so if you take your blanket and you spread it out over your mat the way I've done, and you sit on the edge of your bolster, we're just gonna begin with the opening, opening sitting practice. Okay, so grab, make sure you have a bolster and a, uh, a blanket and a strap as we go into, as we go into the class here. Okay, so begin by sitting on the front edge of your bolster in such a way that your shins can drop down to the floor. And see that your shins do what we call samasthiti. So the shins are balanced right and left. The one knee is not higher away from the floor than the other in order to balance your hip joints, okay? So surf around a little bit, scoot around a little bit in order to balance both sides of your sitting bones. Then begin with your palms facing downward onto your thighs and close your eyes and go inward. Make the transition from your mind turning outward to your awareness being drawn outward to your mind, your spirit penetrating inside. So take a nice soft inhalation a nice long exhalation and a few more that way, patiently, patiently dropping into the weight of your sitting bones, feel the weight of your pelvis, feel the weight of your upper thighs, feel the weight of your hands. It's said in the Tao Te Ching that the root of lightness is heaviness. So find the root, the two roots of your two sitting bones moving downward. Allow your upper legs to be like made of wet sand. Combination of earth and water. Upper thigh bones like made of wet sand. Feel your inhalation, feel your exhalation. So bring a kind of intimacy with your breath. It's not that you have to be some great pranayama master, but rather build a kind of intimacy with your breath rhythm. Relax your jaw, relax your tongue, do shavasana in your jaw, shavasana in your tongue, shavasana in your lips. Very gently raise the back of your skull upward towards the sky, the back of your skull, like you're lifting an antennae to get good reception. Have great patience. So important in this day and age. Cultivate the virya or the strength of patience. Allow your breath to be spontaneous. Don't control your breath. Don't try to micro-engineer every breath. Loosen your diaphragm. Allow your breath to flow with less guardedness less inhibition. Soften your ears. Soften your ears. Bring your ears inside. 
like the knobs of a stringed instrument, like the knobs of a vena, or a sitar, bring the ears softly inside. Listen for the strokes of the breath, the vibration of your breath. The breath is always affected by attitude, moods, how you slept, what you ate. See if you can contact the silence. Silence, one of the greatest healers. Learn to connect to silence. Yoke to silence, merge into that silence. And if your mind wanders, gently shepherd it back to the texture of your breath, silky texture of your breath in the back of your throat. You really bring your mind into your body via the breath. The breath is the guru. Breath is like the guide. Last minute or so here, relaxing the skin of your face, the skin just below your eyes, the skin on the eyelid itself, relax that skin. Soften the skin in the very center of your brow. Set in the Tao Te Ching. Do you have the patience to wait until your mud settles and the water is clear? Do you have the patience? Do you have the patience to wait until your mud settles and the water is clear? Mind mud, emotional mud, psychic mud, settle. from here, bringing your hands together in such a way that just the tips of your fingers touch. Palms do not actually touch, just the thumb pad, index pad, middle ring and little finger pads touch. Hold it right in front of your chest, raise your elbows out to the side, crane the back of your skull to the ceiling, and create open space, feel, sense that open space in your palm, potential space potential space for all things to arise. Bring that same space into your heart. Bring that same space into your chest cavity. Don't disturb your skull. Allow ears once again to be passive, ears very soft. Just the fingertips touching, not the palms. Slow, soft inhalation. Slow, soft inhalation, expanding the side vents of your ribs, side vents of your ribs, expanding your back ribs. Ujjayi breath, 
slow, soft stroke of the breath. Relax your shoulders like you're wearing an old coat. Allow the shoulder blades to drape down. Be as subtle as you can, depending on your experience. In this practice, be as subtle as you can to the movement of prana. bring palms right together. It's a more traditional gesture called the Anjali Mudra or the Namaskarasana. Have your thumbs touching your breastbone. Raise your breastbone. Feel the lightness of your sternum. Lift and widen your sternum. And then from here, we'll turn the prana into sound. So inhaling. After me, Om Mur Uva Suvaha Uva Suvaha Tatsa Vitur Tatsa Vitur Bargo Devasya de Mahi Devasya de Mahi Di Oyona Di Oyona Racho Dayat Racho Dayat Om Shanti 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 very nice and gently releasing your hands raising your head opening your eyes okay very good and you can just set the bolster to the side lie onto your back everyone so that your heels are just off the edge of your of your setup okay heels on the floor Mm. Arms by your side. Please, arms by your side with the palms turning downward. Okay, so the first thing to do is to completely let go. One of the tasks of yoga, in many regards, is learning to let go. So begin by letting go of your legs. Feel the weight of your legs drop into the floor. Feel the weight of your legs drop into the earth without shifting or adjusting or trying to rotate or put yourself into position. Particularly allow the weight of your heels to drop, allow the weight of your knees to release, allow the weight of your pelvis to let go. One of my teachers always said, empty before you begin. This is a really good idea. Empty before you begin. Empty physically, psychically, emotionally. Notice the weight of your buttocks. Notice the weight of your buttocks. Since we're doing the pelvis here this morning, notice if one side of your pelvis seems to grip more than the other, if you can kind of scan down, sense the weight on your pelvis without moving, we're gonna move plenty in just a moment, just without moving, notice right and left pelvis, notice the very, very end of your lumbar spine, where your lumbar spine becomes the sacrum. It's called the L5-S1 junction. Notice the very base of your spine. Do you have a high lumbar curve? Do you have a low lumbar curve? Do you have any compression? Can you sense any compression in your low spine there? Mm. Then just bring the tips of your fingers onto the bony knobs of the front of your hip. 
They're called the ASIS, anterior superior iliac spine. And just see if one side of the hip feels like it's higher than the other or more rotated out than the other, right? We do a lot with what we call samastiti or tarasana, to balance. So just get a sense if you can feel perhaps any difference side to side. And then from here, you can just release your hands back down again and then push out through your right heel without lifting your leg off the floor. Push out through your right heel and stretch the back of your right leg long and pull your toes back towards your kneecap. And then relax that leg all together. Let that leg go all together and then same on your left side. So push out through your left heel Stretch your Achilles tendon, hamstring, pulling the toes back towards you. The foot stays on the floor. And then you relax that side again all together. Mm -hmm. Relax all together. Okay, then first side again. Push out through the heel. Keep the leg on the floor. We're not lifting the leg off the floor. Mm, then relax that side. Okay, just do side to side a few more times this way. Notice as you push out through the heel that the ilias slides down away from the sacrum. Okay, the leg stays on the floor, the heel stays on the floor, and you push out one leg at a time. Notice the excursion of one ilia relative to your sacrum. This is a small movement. This is a small movement, it's not a big movement. Mm -hmm. So notice as, one, as you push out through one heel, that one hip slides downward away from your lower back, while the other hip slides upward into your lower back. See how your pelvis is offsetting? So can you gain the sensitivity to notice if one side moves easier than the other? As we go into a lot of asymmetrical movements for the hip today, this is the most sort of basic, the most fundamental way to assess movement in and around your sacrum. Okay, so you push out through one heel, you slide the whole back of the leg down, you feel the movement of one, of one side of the pelvis sliding down as the other side slides upward. Now bring your fingertips onto your ASIS again. Do this a few more times and you can feel the, the one side of your pelvis move. And do you have more ease in the range of motion on one side or the other? Most people don't walk straight. Most people have some asymmetry in their gait. You might notice the asymmetry here in your own body. Mm. Okay, good, very nice. And then from here, you can go ahead and release all together, bringing your hands back by your side, letting the weight of your pelvis sink. Mm -hmm. Very good, okay. Then from here, go ahead and bend both knees and set your feet directly Underneath your knees, feet hip width apart. Feet on the floor, feet hip width apart. Okay, plant your left foot to the floor and just swing your right knee out into Baddha Konasana. Don't force it to the floor, just allow the knee to drop. And feel the hip joint. One of, my, uh, one of my mentors, one of my first teachers always said, dare to be simple. These are very simple movements. We'll go more complex as we get going. And then you place that foot to the floor and you swing your right knee back up. Keep that knee where it is and then drop your left knee to the side into the Baddha Konasana. And you notice a difference at all in your knee, your hip, your low back as you come back up with that knee. Plant that foot and then drop back to the first side. Just what can you notice? So much of yoga is really about being able to witness and observe what's happening. Go slowly in your own time. You can inhale up and exhale out. You can exhale into the movement. Just compare your two sides, the way a body worker, somebody who does deep tissue work or structural integration might compare 
How's it feel this morning in your knee, your groin, your low back? Are you bilaterally symmetrical? Hats off to you if you're bilaterally symmetrical. If you had any knee trauma, hip trauma, lower back trauma, ankle trauma, it could show up here. And again, it's a very simple movement. So just this is for observation. This is really for your own observation. You might feel kind of ropey, the tendons really ropey, and the hip capsule kind of tight, or you might feel real laxity, like one knee, one hip just wings off to the side. Too much laxity. Mm. Good. Okay, beautiful. Then you'll finish your second side, complete your second side. Then once you have the knees back upright, then pause for 10 seconds, feeling your sacrum like a ripe avocado. Okay, just let your sacrum drop. Feel the weight of your sacrum. Let the sacrum drop and empty and widen. Then take your feet a little wider than your hip joints. Feet still parallel. Feet still parallel. Feet a little wider than your hips. Then keep your left foot where it is. Keep your left knee where it is. And then swing your right knee towards your left foot, arching your lower back. Mm -hmm. Keep your left knee upright. In swing your right leg. This is internal rotation. Arching the lumbar. Then slowly come back up with that knee. Keep that knee where it is. Take a breath in. With the exhale, swing your left knee towards your right foot, arching your lower back. The foot stays on the floor the whole time, although the outer edge of the foot will come off the floor. Inner edge will be on the floor, kind of like you're skiing and riding your edges. Okay, coming back up on that side. Take a full breath in. Exhale, right knee into internal rotation. In swing the knee, in swing the femur. Lift your lumbar and go slowly. So go on your own time, side to side. I think everyone has the movement now. Go slowly. Don't force it. It's not like, oh, how far can I get? That's not the idea. The idea is to assess any barrier. Any barrier. Could be a muscular barrier. Could be a ligamentous barrier. Could even be an organ barrier. Kidney, intestine. Then bring your arms up into the goalpost position so your elbows are at the height of your shoulders with your forearms resting on the floor, and palms facing the ceiling. Mm -hmm. And just let your arms rest there and do a few more of these. Okay, one knee swings internally. You aim that thigh bone on a diagonal. Move that thigh bone on a diagonal. Keep the other knee pretty much where it is. And take a little bit more lift into your lower back. And do the movement on inhalation. Both feet stay on the floor, please. Do the movement on inhalation. Now you assess if your lower back, if one side is more bound than the other. Where do you have asymmetry? Where do you have sticking? in your lower back. There's a very gentle movement on the lumbosacral joint and the lower spine. Breathe in. So it's a nice long inhalation as you go into the movement. Mm -hmm. Take a little more arch into your lumbar and feel what it's like in your whole lower back region. Last couple of here. Hmm. Assessing. You're assessing. You're taking inventory. Okay, very nice. So then you can finish your second side. When you finish your second side, then you can go ahead and release and stretch your legs out all together. Mm. 
Bring your arms back by your side and just pause for 20 seconds. Feel the weight of your pelvis now. So how's it feel in there now? What's it feel like? What's it feel like in your buttocks, the weight of your, the weight of your sacrum, your lower back? Mm. Good. Okay, very nice. Then take a nice deep sea, sea swell of breath, nice full breath, and then with your exhale, go ahead and bend your knees once again and just ground your left foot to the floor and loop a strap over your right foot and stretch your right leg straight up towards the sky. Loop over the heel, it's a better, it's a better, a better latch. So go right over the heel, hold the strap in your right hand. Mm. So right leg is up and left leg is down. Right leg is up and left leg is down. Okay, then push your left heel to the floor, lift your pelvis a little bit off the floor and scoot your sacrum towards your left heel. Slide your sacrum out towards your left heel. Mm -hmm. Then from here, push the heel up into the strap. So the leg is perpendicular to the floor. Right leg is perpendicular to floor. Do you remember from geometry? 10th grade geometry. Right leg perpendicular to floor. Okay, then from here, stretch your left leg out and hold your left leg off the floor six inches. And push out through your left heel, like we were doing before. Push out through your left heel, stretch your left leg really long, and then slowly, when you bring your left leg down, touch the floor with the back of the thigh bone first. So when you bring the left leg down, kiss the floor with the back of the thigh bone as you bring the leg all the way down. Great, then bend your right knee and draw your outer knee down towards your outer torso. You can choke your hand up on the strap for a second. Put three sandbags on your left thigh bone. Don't let your left thigh bone end up on the ceiling. Take a deep breath, soften the, the right groins as you bend the knee, and the knee is right up against your outer, outer ribs, R knee right against the outer rib. Then re-extend the leg slowly straight back up again. Mm. Push up through the heel, spread your toes really wide. Rifle the heel up to the ceiling. As you do that, press your right thigh bone away from you towards your hamstring. Mm -hmm. Great, very good. Okay, then swapping over to the other side. Bring your right foot to the floor, loop the strap over the center of your left heel and extend the center of your left heel straight up. Okay, so one right knee is bent, right foot is on the floor, mm -hmm. and notice sensation in the back of your left leg. Okay, notice sensation, use your breathing, notice the sensation, take a nice breath here. Press your right heel, lift your sacrum off the floor and kind of scoop your whole back pelvis towards your right heel and then bring your pelvis back down again. And then stretch your right leg back out and hover six inches off the floor. Push out through your heel. Stretch the back of your right leg long. as We call it Uttanasana. Uttanasana in your right leg. Pushing out through the heel, stretching your hamstring long. Now slowly bring the leg to the floor and touch the floor with the hamstring first. Hamstring. Hamstring touches. Mm. Good. Take a nice deep breath. With the exhalation, bend your left knee. Draw your knee down towards your outer trunk. Try not to let the knee go off to the side like a wobbly wheel. Pull the knee right in against your hip joint. This is pure flexion of the hip. Like you're basically doing a lunge on your back. Yeah? Good. Exhale deeply through your left hip socket. Feel, don't just plow through it. It's not about how deep you can go, it's about how much you can feel as you go. Then hold the strap firmly and re-extend. Re-extend the leg up, re-extend. Push up through your heel. Push up through your heel. Take a nice deep sea swell of breath. 
Breathe all the way into your lower, lower back in your sacral region. Beautiful. Okay, well done. Then swap back over to the first side. Right leg up, left leg down. And this time, scoot the bolster around to the outside of your right leg, right near your hip joint. You can just set the bolster right near the hip joint. Okay, then hold the strap firmly with your right hand. Stretch left leg out as well. Take a nice deep breath in. Have the hand, right hand close to your right foot. And then from here on the exhale, swing your right leg off to the right, Supta Parangushtasana. Without the left thigh bone coming up to the ceiling. It's a point deduction if your left thigh bone comes up to the ceiling. Croatian judge, South African judge, and the Scottish judge, they always take off points. If the thigh bone, left thigh bone, comes up away from the floor. So put three sandbags on your left thigh bone. And as you do that, push out through your left heel. We already did that before in the beginning. Push out through your left heel. Then stretch your left arm straight out to the side, please, with the palm facing up. And reach your left arm to the left. Reach your left arm to the left. Mm. Good. Okay. Then from here, take your left leg and bring your left leg to the left six inches. Six inches. The heel's still on the floor. Then push out through your left heel, please. Push out through the left heel. And then feel your breath into your abdomen. So nice, long, open breath into your abdomen. Great. Then crawl your right hand down along the strap towards your outer foot. If you're quite, quite flexible, you could catch the outer foot with your hand. Mm -hmm. Stretch your left arm and make your left arm heavy. Left arm should be five times as heavy as the right arm. Left leg should be very heavy. Make your left thigh bone heavy. Mm. So this is a hip joint class. Okay, so now feel breath, the proverbial breath, into your hip joints. Push out through your left heel. Keep your left leg active. Turn your navel skin to the left. Turn your navel skin to the left. Don't just do poses. I stopped doing poses a long time ago. You don't want to do poses. You want to feel poses. You want to gain sensitivity. Gain sensitivity within the pose. Especially the fine movements, the small movements within the poses. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, beautiful. Then bring your left leg back to the midline. Hold the strap firmly with your right hand. And then inhale, draw your right leg back up to center. Very good. Then swapping over, we have another side. There are always two sides to this thing. Second side. Take your, your bolster with you, or you could use a block. Set it to the outside of your leg. Loop the strap over the heel. Catch hold of the strap. Push out through your right leg. Extend your right leg. Take a deep breath in. Take a breath for nothing. And then with the exhale, sweep your left leg to the left. Right thigh bone heavy. Right thigh bone heavy. Right thigh bone heavy. Kiss the floor with the back of the right thigh. Then you prop the outer leg onto the bolster, no? So you can release the inner left groin deeper. We're going to do more active work soon enough. We're not going to do the whole class on the floor by any means. But this is to open up the hips before we start weight bearing. So push out through your heels, especially the inner heel of the foot that you caught. The inner edge of your left heel. Push out through the inner left heel. Notice where your breathing is. Notice where your breath is. Mm -hmm. Then from here, you're going to take your right leg to the right. Four to six inches. Take your right leg to the right. Four to six inches. Mm -hmm. Push out through your right heel. Push out through your right heel. And spread wide the breathing in your abdominal area. Mm. You can walk your hand closer to the foot along the strap. You could catch the outer foot if you have quite a bit of range of motion without your right thigh bone coming off the floor. Yeah, last 20 seconds. Stretch right arm to the right. Make your right arm heavy. 
Turn on your sensation scanner, observe sensation. If you don't get any sensation at all, then I'd be worried about you. You want to have just the right amount of sensation, not overwhelming, just, an, just the right amount of sensation. It's different for everybody. And it's not like the more sensation and better. It's more like the, how much can you attune to sensation? Mm, very good. Beautiful. Then bring right leg back to the midline. Hold firmly with your left hand. Inhale, rise. Come all the way up to center. Mm, very nice. And then from here, releasing and draw both knees into your chest for Supta Sukhasana. So cross your shins and grab hold of your outer feet. Grab hold of your outer feet so the palms of your hands face the soles of your feet. The palms of your hands face the soles of your feet. And where the cross of the shin is, have the cross of the, sh of the shin right on the midline, right on the midline of your body. Okay, now manually pull your feet down towards the floor as you also draw feet a little bit in towards your chest or draw your knees a little bit more over your chest. Mm -hmm. Okay, now really spread your tail feathers, what I call spreading tail feathers. Broaden your sacrum, broaden your lower back. Push out through your heels a little bit. Open your toes, spread your toes, push out through your heels. And pull with your hands so your elbows are moving out to the sides. Mm -hmm. This external rotation of the hip. Good. Nice open breath into your mid-back. Okay, spread your mid-back really wide. Your mid-back. Beautiful. Okay. And from here, cross the other way. So the other shin is on top. There's actually a second side to this situation. So other shin on top. Take hold with your hands near the heel. It's a better grip. And pull with your hands out to the sides. And feel the spreading, the lateral spreading of your lower back. Spreading wide also your kidneys. So breathe into your back ribs. Spread wide your kidneys like the way a parachute comes down out of the sky, spread the tissue of your middle back really wide. Mm. Good, nice. And then from here, releasing and draw your knees into your chest. And then from here, just rock and come right up to sitting. Okay, when you're sitting, go ahead and push out through your heels and just stretch the backs of your legs really long. Okay, push right out through your heels. Yeah? Okay, then we do the same pose again. So cross your shins, take your right shin in front so that you're <clears throat> still on your blanket and your feet are right underneath your knees. The feet aren't up against your hip, feet are right under your knees. And the cross is right on the midline, right on the central axis, okay? Mm -hmm. And then from here, raise arms to the sky. Raise your side trunk. Go up with your side trunk. Raise your side body up. Then exhale, elongate, fold. Mm. Stretch your arms out and look between your thumbs. Please, look between your thumbs. Now raise your side trunk a little bit more. Bring your side trunk higher. Mm. Pull your lower back in like you're doing cobra in your lower back. Just keep your head up for a moment. Draw your lower back in more like cobra in your lower back. Then keep that length and exhale, elongate, fold. Rest the forehead towards the floor, to the floor. Go on stretching your side body forward. Stretch your side body forward. Can I show you? Yeah. Yeah. Push out through your heels. So you flex your feet. You push out through your heels. Push your heels to the sides. Mm-hmm. Take a nice deep full breath here and then swing your sternum over your left knee and stretch your right arm on a diagonal. Stretch your right arm on a, on a diagonal off, <clears throat> off to the left. Mm, now breathe through your right nostril and bring your breath into your right lower back. 
Okay, breathe through your right nostril, best you can, and breathe into your right lower back. Yeah. Then hook your navel more to the left. Hook your navel more to the left. Stretch your right arm more. Stretch your right arm longer. Lift your navel and drag your navel to the left. Mm, very nice. Then from here, swing back to the center, stretching your arms way out in front. Lengthen your arms, lengthen your arms. Lift your navel again. Draw your navel forward towards your chin. Mm -hmm. Very good. Then from here, walk your hands back in towards you and slowly come all the way upright, all the way upright. Good, okay, then from here, take your left hand to the outside of your right knee, your right hand behind, and lift and twist to the right. And exhale deeply as you twist to the right. More exhale than inhale. More exhale than inhale. And pull with your left hand, please. Pull with your left hand. As you pull with your left hand, raise your breastbone up, like a kite, you know, like a kite in the wind. Raise your breastbone, turn your right sternum open. Don't force now. Find just the right amount of force. That's the art of practice, no? To find just the right amount of force. Not too much, not too little. Mm -hmm. Good. Then swap over other side. So right hand to the outside of your left knee. And mm, left hand behind. Lift and twist to the left. Use a good exhalation. You have to spin your abdomen like a, like a cummerbund. Like you have a big cummerbund on. Spin your abdomen as the transverse abdominus, one of the core, most core muscles in the body. Don't lean back. Don't let your spine lean back. Keep your cranium over your pelvis. Pull with your right hand and twist below your navel, midway between your navel and your pelvis. Mm hmm. Beautiful. Then de rotate, coming back to the center. And then stretch your legs back out again. Push out through your heels, tighten your kneecaps, stretch the backs of your legs long. Good. And then there's another side. So left shin in front. Left shin in front. Same pose, Sukhasana, also called Svastikasana. Svastika, the auspicious pose. Okay, then push with your hands so your knees come in towards the midline. Narrow, narrow. Then raise your side trunk, inhale, touch the roof, then exhale, elongate four. Mm. Then pause there for a moment and raise up through your, your chin. Bring your sternum bone up, 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 up. Bring your lumbar into your body. You know, like you're doing cobra in your lower back, in your lower back. Lift up, inhale, look up, exhaling, elongate four. It should be an outer hip experience should be an outer hip experience. So in your mind's eye, weight bear your outer, let your outer hips move down towards the floor. Like you have sandbags on your upper legs, most of the sand dropping to the outside, most of the sand dropping to the outside of the pelvis. Take a nice deep breath in here, and then scoot your sternum over your right knee. So side bend to, to, over to the right. Stretch your left arm very long on a diagonal. And then hook your navel or swing your navel to the right. Breathe through your left nostril down into your left lower back. Okay, so your left nostril breathes into your left quadratus lumborum, if you know that muscle your left piriformis. Could be a right hip experience, that's possible, but more likely it's going to be a left hip experience. Mm -hmm. Nice. Good. Then derotate, come back to the center. Mm -hmm. Good, very nice. 
Then from here, just come halfway up and pause, just halfway up, and then interlace the fingers back behind you. Stretch the arms towards the wall behind you, just halfway up. Now draw your lower back in. Draw your lumbar spine in and in and in. Just drag your arms backwards. Mm -hmm. Good. Then pull with your arms, rise, 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 all the way up to center. Rest your hands onto your thighs. Bring your chin down a little bit and take five slow breaths, focusing on the inhalation. Five slow breaths. Breathe down below, if you can, below your navel. So the breath is like a parachute opening downward. Broaden downward with your breath. Spread wide your middle ribs. Spread your diaphragm horizontally with your breath. Press your sitting bones, raise the back of your skull to the sky. Mm, very nice. Okay, then after that last breath, go ahead and stretch your legs back out again. And then from here, you can swing your feet under and set your blanket to the side and then step back into Downward Facing Dog. Another day, another dog pose. Another day, another dog. When you step back into Downward Dog, please take your feet as wide as your sticky mat. Wide dog. Widedog.com. Take your feet as wide as your mat, okay? Mm-hmm. From here, spread your palms really wide. Open up the fork open, your fingers, like a big spatula, spreading your palms, spreading your fingers. Press the root of your thumb to the floor. Just let the back of your skull go. Let the back of your skull be heavy, heavy. Mm-hmm. Good. Then from here, bend your knees. Bend your knees and tie a couple of healing balloons to your sitting bones. So bend your knees and roll your sitting bones upward, essentially creating anterior tilt of your pelvis, front tilt of your pelvis. It's kind of like a greyhound. This is the greyhound. It's a greyhound dog. Now keep your knees bent and stretch your outer hips back towards the wall behind you. Stretch your outer hips back. Just keep your knees bent. If you bring your Then keep that length of your side waist and re-extend your legs. Then re-extend, re-extend your legs. And moving the crest of your sitting bones up. Sitting bones up, 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 up. Mm-hmm. Good. Take a really nice full open breath or two. And then rise up onto the mound of your big toe. So lift way up onto the mound of your big toe. Good, now satellite your back of your pelvis, way up, way up. Let the back of your head go. Some of you are restraining your neck. Let go of the back of your neck. Let go of your ears, let go of your ears. Now keep the height of your pelvis, the crest of your pelvis, and re-extend your heels back and down. Sitting bones cresting, cresting. Now last 20 seconds. Mm. Very good. Then from here, bend your knees, step or hop your feet to your hands. Neither one's fair game. Inhale, look up. Exhaling, fall down. Bow, release the back of your skull. Mm. Then from here, go hands to your waist. Press into your heels and rise, 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 rise all the way up to center. Okay, beautiful. At the top, bend your knees and hop your feet together. Mm, okay, then you're going to step out to your right, and we're going to do triangle pose. Just notice when you do triangle pose today, we're going to let the back hip come slightly forward. Rather than cranking the back hip back as far as we can, you're going to let the back hip come slightly forward in order to open up through your lower back area. Okay, so once you start at the top, right foot turning out, left foot turning in. 
Why doesn't everybody face this direction, face the door you came in this morning, unless you came through the back door. So right foot turning out, left foot turning in. Mm-hmm. Okay. So from here, if you go the other way, so right foot, the inner right edge of the right foot parallel to the long edge of the sticky mat, and the left foot turns in. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. I'll mirror you. Then from here, stretch your right arm to the ceiling, right arm to the sky. Raise your right trunk up. Just feel, lift your right trunk up. Go up, keep going up. Lift your right knee up, up, more up. Then exhale, reach. Don't sacrifice the length. Reach, reach, reach. As you bring the hand to the middle of the shin. Mm. Rest your left hand to your hip and pause, please. Then grip with your right hand on the shin. Grip with your right hand. Good. Now from here, bend your back knee 20 degrees. Press your back heel to the floor and re-extend your back leg with more power. Did you get the power? Try once more. Bend your back knee. Press the back heel to the floor. Re-extend your back leg with more power. That's it. Now let the left pelvis come a little bit forward towards the floor. Don't crank that left hip back. As you let the left hip come slightly forward, turn the navel spine towards the sky. No hurry now, go slowly. Turn your navel spine, then turn the middle spine towards the sky. Then turn the sternum spine, not the neck. Don't turn the neck, turn the waist, turn your waist. Then from here, stretch your left arm straight up, like a church spire. Stretch the left arm straight up. Reach your left arm, please. Reach your left arm up. Mm. Now notice sensation again, like we did in the beginning on your back. So you can keep tracking the, your experience. You're not just doing the pose just to do it. You're doing it in order to gain more sensation in the hip joint. Now look down to your right foot and bend your right knee 30 degrees. Open your right toes. You can see the color of the mat between your toes. Then re-extend your right leg, really drawing that right hip underneath you. Drawing the right hip underneath you. Turn, turn. Make it feel beautiful on the inside, turn. Ah, very nice. Okay, pull with your left arm. Inhale, rise all the way up to center. Hands to your waist, swap over other side. Feel good? Here we go, second side. Left foot out, right foot in. Then from here, bring your right hand to the waist, left arm to the sky. Mm -hmm. Go on, raise your left torso up. Raise the left and the left knee up. Get the up action. Keep the up action, reach, reach. Reach, reach, very long, long, long in your side waist. Long, long, and then grab hold of the shin with your left hand. Don't let the hand float. You really hold and stabilize there. Mm. Now let's pump open the sacrum through the leg. So bend your back leg, bend your back leg, drive the heel to the floor, and re-extend back leg with more velocity. Yeah, try it again, try it again. Bend your back leg. Press the outer heel to the floor and re-extend your right leg with more power. There you go. Hold the right leg stable and let your right ilia come slightly forward. Don't crank it back. Let it come a little forward. Then turn navel. It takes time. <clears throat> it takes at least 45 seconds to get the complete open turn. Turn your middle spine. Turn your diaphragm spine. Turn your right lung to the ceiling. Right lung to the ceiling. Keep turning, good. Then stretch your right arm to the sky. Mm. Please don't strain. You wanna effort without strain, effort without strain. Then look down at your front foot. Bend your front leg 30 degrees. Open toes so you can see the color of the map between your toe. And then re-extend front leg, slowly, slowly. Drawing your left hip back, left hip back. And stretch your right arm like a church spire. Stretch your right arm, beautiful. Pull with your right wrist, inhale, rise, come all the way up to center, hands to your waist, swap over to the first side again, please. Stance a little wider, stance a little wider. Mm -hmm. Align the heel of the front foot to the arch of your back foot. Take a couple of breaths for nothing. Keep your hands to your waist for a second. Take a deep breath in, with the exhale, bend your right knee. Lengthen your left leg. Yeah, good, okay, slowly come back up. Slowly come back up, press into your back heel, and then with the exhale, bend your right knee again. Mm. 
Good. Come back up again. Yep. Make your back leg very long like, the, like a samurai. And exhaling, bend your right knee again. Good. Then extend arms out to the side like a great bird. Mm -hmm. Touch the sides of the room with your arms. Touch the sides of the room. Don't strain. Effort without strain. Effort. You want to effort, but you don't want to tighten or bunch or lock up. So there's a difference between moving energy and holding energy. You want to move energy. Beautiful. Okay, beautiful. Stretch in your back heel. Inhale, rise up to center. Then hands to your waist, swap over to the second side. So left foot turning out, right foot turning in. Mm -hmm. Hands to your waist. Open your front toes, splay your front toes. Inhale your breath. Exhale, bend your front knee. Mm, drop like a well-oiled drop leaf table. Then come back up again, stretch your back leg, and exhaling, bend your front knee. Mm, come back up again, just do that on your own a few times, reaching your back leg like a samurai. Then exhale, bend your front knee. One more, inhaling to come back, stretch your back leg long, exhaling, bend your front knee. Good. Then float your arms out to the side. Now press into your center heel of your front foot. You've got to use your heels. Like you could imprint the skin, the swirls of the skin onto the mat. So press into the center of your left heel. Open your left toes. Most of the effort should be in the back leg. Back leg. Mm, beautiful. Good. Okay. Then pull with your right arm. Inhale up to center. And then bring your feet back to parallel. So your feet turn slightly in. Now we'll do prasarita padottanasana. So you're going to drill your outer heels down. You'll raise your side torso on the inhale. And exhaling, touch the floor. Just bring your hands to the floor or use a couple of blocks if the floor is far away. Then inhale, raise your chest up and pause. So now you go for your spine being parallel to the floor. Go for the spine being parallel to the floor. And now press your outer edges of your heels down. You want the outer heels heavier than your inner heels. In fact, bend both knees again. Gum your outer heels. Like you have a piece of gum. Gumming. Gum the outer heels. Gum the outer edge of the foot. Then re-extend your legs and vault your inner knees higher. Take a deep breath. Inhale. Look up. And exhaling, incrementally fold. It's up to you as to how far you want to fold. Incrementally fold. This is not a contest. Don't compete with the person next to you or don't compete with the body you had 20 years ago. Just observe what's, what is arising for you now. Now measure the weight on your feet. That's really how you build the foundation to the temple of the legs. So outer weight of your heels moving down. Spread your little toe away from your ring toe. Mm, great. Then go ahead, take your hands to your outer heels. Clasp outer heels with your hands. Pull with your hands. Pull the sides of your torso down. Pull the sides of your torso down, 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 down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Lengthen your side trunk. Then bend both knees again. Slide your side waist down like snow off of a hot roof. Slide your side waist. Keep a good grip with your hands and re-extend your legs, keeping your spine where it is. Mm. Then inhale, raise your chest and your heart again. And then right hand, take hold of your outside of your left shin. Mm -hmm. Go a little more narrow in your stance. Not quite so wide. And pull with your right hand and bring your outside of your, of your skull, right skull, to the outside of your left shin. Pull with your right hand. Good. Then bend your back leg. That's the right leg. Bend your right leg. Press into your outer heel and re-extend your right leg with more power. And breathe all the way down the sheathing of your right lower back all the way down the sheathing of your right lumbar. Beautiful. Then swing through center. Take your left hand to the outside of your right shin. 
Narrow your stance if you're unstable. If it's not so stable, go more narrow. You want to stabilize your hip joint, your sacrum. Mm, now pull with your left hand. Pull with your left hand and hook your navel to the right, not your neck, your navel. Don't confuse neck with navel. Turn navel to the right, sweeping that cummerbund of the transverse abdominis again. Mm. Good. Then from here, swinging back into the middle. Then narrow your stance, not quite so wide. Walk your feet in a bit. Then hands to your waist, gum your heels down, and slowly rise, 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 all the way up to center. Good. At the top, bend your knees and step or jump your feet together. Good. Great. Okay, then just take a block, everyone. As you step your feet apart again, you're going to set the block right to the inside of your right foot. So same distance as we had a moment ago. Watch for a sec. So when you go up into the pose, you're going to take the hand to the block. You'll trap the arm against the inside of the knee, and you'll swing your other arm straight over your ear. Okay, so we're going to use the right arm to trap the right knee back. Okay, so preset the block. Stance as wide as warrior two. Extend your arms out to the side like a great bird. Inhale, and then exhaling, bend your right knee. Bend, 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 and reach your right hand down to the block. Beautiful. Just rest your left hand to your hip for a moment. Okay, now use your right arm as a crowbar to push your right knee back. Push your right knee back. As you do that, then from here, turn your navel towards the sky. Roll your navel towards the sky. Or roll your chest towards the sky. Mm. Keep trapping the knee back with the right arm. Good. Then stretch left arm up to the ceiling. And then exhaling, stretch straight over the ear. Straight over the ear. Uh huh. Okay, now it's the back leg that should have more more extension, more resilience in the back leg. Then drop your right sitting bone down a little bit more. Right buttock bone dropping. And turn your spine. Turn your spine. Mm. Okay, good. Press your back heel. Pull with your left arm. Inhale, rise up to center. Very good. Take the prop with you. Let's swap over to the other side. Enjoy. Left foot turning out, right foot turning in. Uttita Parshva Konasana. Good. Then stretch both arms out to the side like a great bird. Open out through your wings. Inhale and exhale. Bend your knee. Reach, 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 reach your left hand down to the block. Right hand to your hip. Mm. Right. Fulcrum. Use the left arm as a fulcrum to move the knee back. So with the left arm, give it a shove. Push your left knee towards the person behind you. Then, this is a game of inches. Can you drop your left sitting bone a little lower? Left sitting bone. Is it possible? Left sitting bone. Good. Now find your breath. Go a little forward. Then turn the navel spine towards the sky. Don't hurry. Turn the navel. Turn the diaphragm spine. Turn the lung spine. Then stretch right arm up. And exhaling over the ear. Mm, now you have to turn on your strain odometer. Just stay here. You have to turn on your strain, strain and see if you're getting strain. If you're getting strain, you have to find a way to back off strain. You want effort without strain. Turn your chest. Stretch your back leg. Turn your chest. Mm, beautiful. Then pull with your right arm. Inhale. Rise up to center. Great. Turn your feet back in towards each other. Walk in a little bit. Then bend your knees with your hands to your waist and hop your feet together. Okay, good. Just step up to the top of your sticky. Feet hip width apart. Feet parallel to each other. Raise your arms to the sky. Touch the roof. Exhaling, elongate, fold. And then take hold of the big toe and the first two fingers. Then bend your knees and slide your whole torso forward. So as you bend your knees, elongate side waist. Bring your chin up a little bit. Mm -hmm. Good. Then take a nice deep breath. Keep that length out of your belly. Then elongate your legs per your capacity as you draw your head down. 
Then take your feet hip width apart. It's better if you go hip width apart. Mm. Yeah, good. Spread your toes wide. Take your feet a little wider. Spread your toes really wide. And lean slightly forward so the, sh the weight of your pelvis shifts towards the front edge of the pose. Great. Then inhale, lift your head and your heart again. And then slide your palms under your feet, palms facing up. Okay, now if you're in the tight hamstring club, you have to bend your right knees. We might have bend, bend your knees, bend your knees. Let's all bend your knees for a second. Tight hamstring club, you might be a gold member, gold member status in the tight hamstring club. And you bend your knees and you drop your outer hips towards the floor. Tuck your hands all the way under your feet. Spread your toes. Good. Okay, now it's up to you as to what extent you can re-extend your legs. Be mindful of history of hamstring tear or ligamentous strain. Open your toes as you re-extend the legs and then lift your knees like mini helicopters launching off of a pad. Raise your knees, raise your knees. If possible, you shift your pelvis forward towards your toes, half inch, maybe a full inch. Breathe through your nose, steady canter of your breath. Mm. Beautiful, then raise your head, raise your lungs, release your hands out, hands down, step back, downward facing dog. Let's take the escape route, downward facing dog. Feet hip width apart this time. When you go feet hip width apart, take the block between your upper inner thighs and grip the face of it, which is the wide side, a flat side, flat side. Between your upper legs at the top, at the very top. Okay, then squeeze the block. Squeeze the block. As you squeeze the block, project your thigh bones back towards the wall behind you. Press your thigh bones back with some velocity, with some speed. Sometimes you go quickly between poses, you go fast between, sometimes you go fast within a pose. And then you, this time you wanna go fast within the pose with your upper legs pressing back. And lift the tips of your toes off the floor. Not the heels, the toes, toes. Now press thigh bones back, and then crest the sitting bones once more. Crest your sitting bones high here. Make sure you completely drop the back of your skull now. Empty your neck, empty your ears. You can bob your head a little side to side, wag your head a little side to side. Make sure you unsheath any tension in your neck. Last 20 seconds, gripping the brock, pressing thigh bones back. Mm. Very good. Then you can take the block out, set it up to the very top of your right-hand corner of your mat. Top right-hand corner of your mat. Good. Then from here, step your right foot up between your hands for Ardha Chandrasana, the half moon pose. You walk the block out beyond your little toe to the right of the little toe. Slowly raise up onto your right leg and lift your left leg parallel to the floor or a little bit higher. Just use the block, use the block. Because the tendency is to compress your underside rib. So you want to lengthen the underside of your waist. Now from here, rest your left hand to here. Now from here, look down at your standing foot. Look down at your standing foot and open your standing toes. Move the block a little forward, my friend, that way. Yeah, open your standing toes and press into your standing heel. Mm, then push out through the heel that's in space. Push out through the heel that's in space. <clears throat> then stretch your left arm. Stretch your left arm up. Reach your left arm higher, 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 higher. Mm-hmm. There's not a back bend now. Don't back bend your kidneys. Try to breathe into the sheathing of your kidneys. Like you are in swim lesson. You have a little, little bubble for learning to swim. Broaden the bubble of the kidneys. Beautiful. Okay, look down. Bend your right knee. Slowly step your left leg down. Hands to the floor, downward facing dog. Back you go to the dog pose. Good, take three or four breaths. Ventilate, get some bright red oxygenated blood in there. Mm. Then here we go, take your time. Bend your left leg, step your left foot up between your hands, 
Set the block to the outer edge of your, of your left toe, ahead of your foot. Bend your front knee, take a small step in with your back foot, and raise your right leg slowly. Push out through your aerial heel. The foot that's in space, you have to push out through that heel. Good, just rest your right hand to your hip and turn your belly open towards the door you came in this morning. Now take your time, look down at your standing foot. See if your toes are turning like multicolored. Can you spread wide your toes, more space between your toes, and strike the center heel into the floor. That's a standing foot, strike the center heel. Raise the staff of the standing leg. Then turn your chest, turn your navel, turn your mid trunk, and then stretch right arm to sky. If you fall in any direction, fall upward. Fall upward. Stretch your right arm. Don't strain your neck. Let go of your neck more in terms of holding tension. One more breath. Mm. Then from here, bend your standing knee. Bring both hands to the floor. Right leg back, dog pose again. Breathe, widen, breathe, widen. Nice and open breath. Can you breathe all the way down into your, your lower back, hip joint? Beautiful. Then release and come all the way through to sitting. Okay, great. Then just come back up onto the bolster, everyone, so you can set the bolster horizontally. Come up onto your perch. Come up onto your perch. Extra extend both legs out. Push out through your heels. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Then from here, bend your right knee. Draw your right heel right up against the, the bolster. You can actually touch the bolster. Then take your straight leg to the left, six to 10 inches. Right arm to the ceiling. Go up as we did with the standing work. Lengthen the side trunk and exhale, hook your elbow to the inside of the knee. Bring your left hand behind you and lift and turn to the left. Lift and twist to the left. Use your right arm as a crowbar. Push your right arm against the inside of the knee. So you push the arm against the inside of the knee, raise your side waist. Mm -hmm. And put three sandbags on your left leg, the straight leg. So left leg is heavy. Push out through your left heel like we did in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Then lean more forward so the trunk goes between your two knees. Ex those of you who can, the second stage is you take your right arm, you reach it around the shin, and you catch hold of the fingers of the wrist, and then you lift and turn to the left again. You lift and turn to the left again. Now use your right foot for more push off. So your right foot becomes, it's, it's like a standing pose. Push into your right foot. And then go on lifting your side waist. Up, 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 up. Stand, the left leg should have more density to it. Ground your left heel. Press your left thigh bone down. Beautiful, good, and then unpack, out we go. Mm, stretching right leg out, push out through your heels, spread your toes wide, and beautiful second side. So then you take left foot in, draw the foot right up against the buttock bone, take your right leg to the right, mm, six inches, then left arm, go up, up, left arm up, exhaling, latch to the inside of the knee. Right hand behind you, lift and turn to the right. Lift and turn to the right. Now where, where the outer arm meets the outer knee is where you gain your, your, your leverage. So push outer arm to inner knee, resist with inner knee, and take sideways higher, higher. Ah, now how's your right lung? Can you open right lung towards the wall behind you? So lift right lung, space in your right lung. Follow the sensation, especially in that lower back, turning off of the hip joint. Then those of you can, you lean forward, bring your torso forward between the two knees, lasso the arm around or not, 
and catch hold of the fingers. Some of you are fine on the first stage. The latch is not that important. Then you raise your trunk and you turn to the right. Now the question is, how light has your left heel gotten? Left heel is now is almost off the floor. You have to press your left heel down. And you have to stretch down into your straight leg more. Mm -hmm. Then from here, try to get more lift of the anterior spine. Front spine higher. Good. Then from here, exhale, releasing. Back out we go. Stretching both legs out. Push out through your heels. Spread your toes wide. Uh-huh. Okay, good. And then spin your bolster around so the end of the bolster is facing the front edge of your sticky mat. And from here, tuck your right leg under and bring your left leg on top. So we're going to twist to the left again. So right leg under, left leg on top. Okay, so half of the left foot is in front of the knee, half of the foot's behind the knee. Mm -hmm. Okay, then left hand behind you. Stretch your right arm again to the sky. Now I recommend this hook of latching the forearm to the outside of the knee. Let's just do the forearm latch, like a coat hanger. Now pull with the coat hanger of your right arm, pull the knee in towards your chest. Pull your knee into your chest. Good, now climb the ladder of your lower back. It just it takes time. It can take at least 60 seconds to get the good lift out of the lower back. So raise up out of your right side of your lower back, right side lumbar. Then complete the exhale more. You have to really deepen the exhale down to the nadir, to the lowest point, the exhale. Just be patient. Remember, have the patience to wait until your mud settles and the water is clear. So you have the patience to set your pelvis further down onto the bolster. Drop the weight of your pelvis. Pull the bent knee in a little more with a coat hanger arm and raise the left lung. If you can, if you, get, if you can do it, you raise the left chest, you raise the left sternum and turn your left lung towards the wall behind you. Mm-hmm, good. Beautiful, then untether, releasing, out we go. Stretch both legs out, spread your toes, push out through your heels, widen the soles of your feet, and then let's swap over. So here we go, second side, Ardha Matsyendrasana. So tuck your, tuck your left leg under and your right leg on top. Mm -hmm. Good, okay, then right hand behind, stretch left arm to ceiling, Exhale and go for the coat hanger. Pull the, the, the knee, pull the knee into the midline and raise your navel away from the floor. The tendency is the navel gets dragged down into the floor because the lumbar is tight. So now you have to hoist, the hoist asana, hoist the navel up. Compare your two sides. It depends on your hip joint as to how much range you have on either side. Yeah, now from here, lift the left side of your waist, left lumbar. It takes time, right? To give it time. It's not, a, it's not a contest, give it time. And as you raise your sternum open, kind of flower the right side of your sternum, the right side of your lung. Another 20 seconds. Follow the exhalation all the way down to its nadir, to its lowest point. It's, that little, it's the depth of the exhale you get your twist, like you're wringing out a washcloth. Mm, great, okay, then from here, releasing back we go and stretching both legs out again. Push out through your heels. Good. Okay, and then from here you can just come down off of your seat and you're going to lie onto your back and cross your legs into the cow pose. And draw knees into your chest. Draw knees into your chest, pulling your hand, with your hands so that your feet go out to the outer edge of your hips, hip joint and towards the floor. Supine cow pose, supine bovine. 
as you pull with your hands, feel the spreading of the outer edge of your hip joint. So it's really piriformis muscle. It's really the piriformis muscle. Now, a couple ways to work this. You can pull the hands more, you can pull the feet more on a diagonal towards the floor, and you can draw your knees closer to your chest. Either one is really good. Mm -hmm. And exhale really deeply, spreading the, the fascial sheathing covering your kidneys to really restore the deep chi or the deep prana in the body. Breathe all the way down into your lumbosacral area. So you're getting some bright red oxygenated blood into your lumbosacrum. Mm hmm Great. Okay, then try the other side. Swap over. Let's see what's in store with the left leg on top. Generally, whatever leg is on top, it'll be more demanding in the outer embankment of the hip on that side. So draw knees towards chest. Pull manually. Pull towards the floor and take inventory again as to the difference bilaterally in your left hip versus your right hip. Use your inhale to really wash like a breath wash. Wash your breath into the lumbosacrum. Mm -hmm. Good. <clears throat> then, from here, go ahead and release and drawing both knees into your chest. Uh-huh. Good. And then do the figure four pose, so right back of right ankle on your lower left knee and draw your left knee into your chest. Okay, let's get into the embankment of the outer hip this way. So pull left knee into chest and feel the spreading of the buttock band where the leg becomes the buttock. Okay, then from here, start moving your right knee a little away from your head. So right knee moves a little bit away from your head. Then take your left hand and hold your, hold your right foot in your left hand. Mm -hmm. Then take your right hand on the inside of your right knee, inside of your right knee, and hold that leg. Hold that leg. Okay, then as you do that, then as you do that, keep the right shin right where it is and then detach your legs and bring the left foot to the floor. Keep the right shin right where it is. Right where it is. Detach your two legs. Mm -hmm. Okay, with your left hand, pull your right foot towards your right shoulder without being aggressive. Now, from here, the left leg is still bent, so you keep the left foot flat to the floor. And then you take your, the foot you caught that's in the air and slide that like an old-fashioned typewriter, slide it to the left. Slide it to the left. Just a little bit, like six inches, and pause. Mm -hmm. Feel the embankment of the outer hip. Take a breath in there. And then from here, slide the foot a little bit more to the left like old-fashioned typewriter, and pause. Push out through your heel, spread your toes. This should be an outer right hip experience. Take full breath, so you want blood flow into the hip. These are hard structures to move. And go old-fashioned typewriter, go a little more to the left. Mm, and slowly come back the way you came in all the way back and then swap over figure four on your other side. Okay, so left 
ankle is trapped by your right knee, draw your right knee into your chest. Exhale deeply a few times. Exhale deeply a few times. Spreading tail feathers really wide. Then from here, hold that left foot in your right hand. Cradle the foot in your hand. Take your left hand to the inside of your left knee. Keep your shin where it is and detach your two limbs. Okay, bring your right foot to the floor. Bring your right foot to the floor. Yeah, bring the shin, that left shin, a little more over your sternum. There you go. Now, old-fashioned typewriter, slide that shin to the right. Eh, four to six inches, that's plenty. And pause. Because there's so many fibers in the hip joint complex. There's so many different fibers that you will address them incrementally as you move through this little sequence. And going a little bit more to the side, old-fashioned typewriter, moving your foot more to the right. Mm-hmm. Pause. Left hip's going to come a little bit off of the floor. Then you slide a little more to the right, maybe. Push out through your left heel. Mm. Breathe into the area of sensation. Bring a lot of bright red blood flow into the area of sensation. And then slowly, slowly come back. Great. Then draw both knees into your chest. Mm -hmm. And exhale deeply a few times. So the kidneys are like water balloons. The lower back, which is really the area of fertility and vitality, it drops and widens. So just exhale deeply a few times. Great. Then you can stretch your legs out onto the floor. Bring your feet right together like Supta Tadasana. So just legs extend, feet together. Push out through your heels and spread your toes really wide. Just stretch the backs of your legs long. Mm. Then from here, once you have the backs of your legs long, just release your legs all together. Just let them flop off the midline like a floppy fish. Allow the weight of your legs to fall away from the midline. Just test to make sure you don't have any binding. Scoot out through your right heel a little bit like we did in the opening. Release the back of your right leg. Relax your right leg all together. And then do that on the left side. Scoot out through your left heel. Slide the back of the left leg and then relax that leg all together. Measure the weight on your buttocks. Feel the weight of your buttocks drop into the earth. Feel your sacrum like a ripe avocado again. Feel that kind of overripe. So sacrum pelvis dropping into the floor, widening and spreading. Back to the silence we started with. Silence that's the greatest of healers. This time you don't do anything to manipulate your structure. Just trust the body's innate intelligence to assimilate, assimilate the practice. integrate all of the various movements, especially if some of this was new to you. Just trust your body's innate intelligence. Let go of your legs, let go of your heels, let go of your feet. Empty like a big drain pipe, empty out through both legs. Let your breath settle really deep inside. Settle the particles of prana, all the particles of prana, settling your hips, your shoulders, and the back of your skull.
Once you think you've let go all that you can, let go a little bit more. And from here, take like last exhalation, like an outgoing tide. Exhale deeply. Exhale physically. Exhale psychically. Exhale emotionally. Exhale very deeply. Empty, empty. And and just slowly then bend to your knees, set your feet to the floor. Pause for 20 seconds with your knees bent. Just feel the weight of the back of your pelvis again. Feel the weight of the back of your pelvis, like wet sand, sinking, dropping, widening. Mm. Then just slowly rolling to your side. As you roll to your side, sweep up to sitting and just come to sit on the edge of your bolster again, okay? Just like we did in the beginning. Sit on to the edge of the support. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Turn your palms up to the ceiling, resting the back of your hand to your thigh. Make your eyes like liquid jewels. Descend to your eyes, soft eyes. Soft tongue is like a seated shavasana, really. Soft tongue, shavasana tongue, shavasana jaw. Raise gently back of your brain stem upward like you're lifting an antennae to get good reception. Take a nice, slow, soft inhalation. Spreading what's called the Vyana Vayu, the pervading breath. After all this hip work, after all the hip work, now spread wide the inhale like a wide place in a river broadening the side banks of your trunk, broadening your ribs. Perhaps the most important part of the practice, assimilating, assimilating the pranas would be like a big sponge. Every pore, every cell absorbent, especially the cells inside in and around your skull. Slow, soft strokes of the breath. Ujjayi breath. Feel the liquid river of the breath. Then without disturbing at all, your skull, bring your two palms together, touching your thumb to your breastbone, breastbone to your thumb, raise your heart, descending your head, feel the triad of your heart, your head, and your hand. Namaste.